Hi guys, you're welcome to the next model of this weather application, which is called the Smarter Syncing. What about we'll be synchronizing the weather data? Uh, right there in the source file, you're going to create a sub package called Sync over here. Inside the Sync sub, sub package, we have the Weather Sync Intent Service, the Weather Sync Tax, the Weather Sync Utilities. These are all Java classes. We'll be looking at the weather sync tax Java class. Uh, you create uh, a class called the weather sync tax, as mentioned earlier. Uh, within the weather sync tax, you create a synchronized public static void method called the sync weather, which is going to perform the network request for update weather that passes the JSON from that request and inserts the new weather information into our content provider. Uh, this will notify the user that new weather has been loaded. If the user hasn't been notified of the weather within the last day and they haven't dis disabled the notifications in the preferences screen, uh, you, this is just what the sync weather is doing, which holds on to the context. Uh, within the sync weather, is going to fetch a new weather data, which is the try method that gets the URL method will return the URL that we need to get the forecast JSON for the weather. It will decide whether to create a URL based off of the latitude and longitude or off of a simple location as a string. However, we have the weather request URL that gets the URL and pass the context. So it is going to use the URL to retrieve the JSON with the JSON weather response. You have the network utilities that get the response from the HTTP URL, passing the weather request URL as the parameter. It's going to pass the JSON into the list of weather values. How about we have the weather values? We have the content values array. Uh, the open weather JSON utilities uh, that gets the content values from JSON, which has the context and the JSON weather response. In case where our JSON contained an error code, we have the get weather content values from JSON, uh, which would have returned null. We need to check for those cases here to prevent any null pointer exceptions being thrown. We also have no reason to insert fresh data if there isn't any to insert. Well, we have the if statement, the, the test for the weather values, if it's not equals to null, and the weather values length. Uh, if it's not equals to zero. So this is going to get a handle on the content resolver to delete and insert data. What about we have the sunshine content resolver, which gets the content resolver method. Uh, if we have valid results, the delete the old data and insert the new. What about we delete uh, the weather contract based on the weather entry and the content URI. Now you need to insert our new weather data. Well, we have the bulk insert, the weather entry based on the content URI and the weather values. So we're going to catch an exception, which is actually going to print, print this to stack trace that the server probably is invalid. That takes us down to the weather sync intent service Java class. We create a new class called weather sync intent service that extends the intent service uh, this is a subclass for handling asynchronous tax request in a service on a separate handler thread we have the constructor that calls the super and passes the name of this class which is the weather sync intent service we're going to override it on handle intent and we delete we're going to call the weather sync tax sync weather with this particular class let's look at the weather sync utilities well by we we'll create a class called the weather sync utils you're going to declare a private static boolean field called the s initialized uh, whereby we're going to create a periodic sync tax and check to see if an immediate sync is required if an immediate sync is required, this method will take care of making sure that the sync occurs. 
where we have the context that will be passed to other methods and used to access the, re the content resolver. We're going to create a synchronized public static void method called initialize and only execute this method body if initialize is false. So we're going to perform initialization once per app lifetime. If initialization has already been performed, we have nothing to do in this method. Baba is going to return. If the method body is executed, it's going to set the initialize to true. Uh, this is to check to see if our weather content provider is empty. We need to check to see if our content provider has data to display in our forecast list. Uh, however, performing a query on the main thread is a bad idea as this may cause our UI to lag behind. Therefore, we create a method. We create a thread in which we will run the query to check the contents of our content provider. That's the thread which is actually going to run at the background. The URL for each row of weather data is our weather table, which is the content URI. Since this query is going, is going to be used only as a check to see if we have any data rather than to display data, we just need to project the ID of each row in our queries where we display data. We need to project more columns to determine what weather details need to be displayed, whereby we have the projection columns. Uh, the weather entry and its ID, we have the selection statement. This is a string, a project column, it's a string array. Uh, we also need a cursor, whereby we perform the query to check to see if we have any weather data. But well, this is the cursor to get the content resolver, and we query it to forecast the query URI, the projection column, and the selection statement that was declared earlier. The cursor object can be known for various different reasons. A few are listed below, you know. This is just uh, a good comment that is actually going to be very useful for you in order to understand each line of code. If it is empty or have a no cursor, it's going to sync the weather row. So if that's if the content provider is empty, it's going to start immediate syncing. So what's this method doing? Uh, it's going to create a public static binding called the start immediate sync. What about the helper method to perform a sync immediately using an intent service for asynchronous execution? The content used to start the intent service for the sync. Now we're going to start the weather sync intent service using the intent, which is the intent to sync immediately. Now it's going to call on the weather sync intent service class when it notices that the content provider is empty. It's going to start the service and pass the intent to sync immediately as its parameter. That's it for the smart syncing. From here, we'll be moving to the Firebase job dispatcher. Please don't go anywhere.